Welcome to Draco the Dragon series number five. We've done pretty much the basics, so it's now time to talk strictly about your dragon. Now, maybe everybody doesn't have a dragon. You know, I didn't counsel everybody in the world, and that was my, that's how I discovered everything, is as a therapist setting with people, all right? The people that came to me had dragons. So this is really for that public, if you have a dragon, all right? The dragon, the way I want you to help you discover it, is you can't see it, <laughs> so, because it's, it's in the shadows. It's just a little beyond, and our, our just mind doesn't see it. But there is a connection right here to the back of our neck and, quote, to our gut. It's like a gut instinct. You'd say a gut feeling, or in the back of our neck. And this is how it operates, okay? And I guess the only thing I want to say to you before we start is you're not going to be so pleased when you learn about how much the dragon has learned your life. You're just not. So the greatest thing is, you know, you could think, oh, this is bad. This is evil. This is awful. Well, if you want to start that way, I don't think you'll ever ever get it, all right? What I would encourage you above all is to know this is really your senior relationship. It has been with you since you arrived on planet Earth and will be with you until you actually go into the next dimension, into immortality, all right? So you want to develop a relationship. You want to have a really good relationship, not a conflictive one, but a good relationship. So I would start off by giving gratitude. Now, what are you gonna give gratitude for? One, that it's been with you side by side and in its way protecting you, looking after you all of this time, okay? So the more gratitude, every time you find something, give gratitude. Next is you need to forgive it. You forgive the dragon for all of the times that it's caused harm, which I'm gonna teach you how to discover, all right? And you forgive yourself. With that, you, you'll, you'll go fine. But forgive, forgive, forgive. Don't go, oh, well, you did this, so you've gotta do nine years of amends projects. No, <laughs> forget that, just Forgive. Forgive because forgive actually puts you in a heart place. See, it, it's, a, it's a really good thing. Another reason that you really want to discover your dragon, because remember, the basic script is goodness triumphs over evil. Okay? Until you discover and deal with your dragon and develop a good relationship, you'll always feel, I'm not good enough. It will not make any difference what you do. There will always be, you know, I'm really not good enough. I'm not good enough. Well, why you're not good enough is if you really ask yourself, well, I've done some pretty awful things. I'm harmful on this. I've done this. No, that is your dragon. So you are good enough. As a matter of fact, if you start off with the premise, I'm good, my dragon is good, it has a good purpose. It's two good <laughs> beings, two good consciousness. We can solve this. It's not either or, you versus your dragon. It is absolute together. I'm gonna put down my darling little, little therapy dog, all right? So, so this is it. Now discover it. Number one, <clears throat> it operates on just three principles, really. It's there to protect you for fear. It's, it works on fear, and that's flight. It always wants you to run. If there's something fearful, like, oh my God, you can't handle this, you can't handle this, you'll die, you'll do this, and you go, okay, 
run away. All right? So there's one virtue that you must develop if you want to develop a good relationship with your dragon. And that is you have to develop courage. So your dragon becomes like your personal growth coach in a way. I'm saying courage, not just physical courage, because I know a lot of people who really are wonderful. They do all kinds of things and become courageous physically. But remember, it's physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So now we come to emotional courage, have none just run from talking to their spouse or their partner or a relationship or to their boss or anybody. Their emotional courage is very low. Well, then the dragon takes over. So you don't want that. So you will want to develop emotional courage. And then what about mental courage? The mental courage to think your own thoughts instead of listening to what everybody else says, see, and taking any information and going, yes, yes, yes. Thinking your own thoughts, coming to your own conclusions. It's a lot to develop mental courage, all right? And spiritual courage, too, <laughs> see? So I'm just going to talk about this one thing in this one video, and that is to deal with fear and this flight which comes through you like, I run, courage. That's what you want to develop. And as you develop the courage, oh my God, you just feel so good. It's like, I am good enough. I can deal with fear. Okay? Namaste.